I've been on the hunt for the perfect rig that provides the smoothest footage possible while also maintaining the highest quality image. I think I found what I was looking for. I'm gonna show you how I built this rig, how easy it is to use, where to get all the parts, including the two screws that you can find in any electrical outlet, more on that later in the video, and also some sample footage I achieved using this setup. I'm not gonna ask you to subscribe or like this video because I figure if you like it then, you'll just do it. To start off, you can use different setups, cameras, and gimbals with this rig, so it's not just for bigger DSLRs or cinema cameras. It's somewhat of a universal rig up to a certain point. I wouldn't put the Osmo Pocket on it, but it can pretty much hold anything all the way up to 22 pounds. Now, like I said, I've been on the hunt for the perfect rig that can provide the smoothest footage possible while also delivering on a very high quality video. There are ways to achieve super smooth footage with high quality cameras, but I needed something I could take anywhere in the drop of a hat and still achieve those results. I've used the Osmo Pocket with the fourth axis arm attachment, the Osmo Mobile 2 for my phone, the Moza Aircross, the Weeble S, Ronin RS C2, and a few glide cams in the past. I have noticed a trade-off in the universe of rigs and setups, and that is while I can achieve very high quality picture with the A7S III or the A7 III, I've never been able to achieve a super smooth shot with no post-production stabilization, even while using a gimbal. Now maybe others don't notice, but I constantly see that up and down movement that I get from my steps no matter how good I ninja walk. And that's even over flat surfaces like on cement or on a street. When I walk on grass or dirt, there's almost no hope due to the unpredictable surface that I'm walking on. And as my gear bank grows, so did the setups and the weight of the rigs. There had to be a solution. And I already have a bad back on top of it, so I was limited on what I could actually put on my rig. The Osmo Pocket attached to the fourth axis arm has come closest to what I've been hunting for. The up and down movements that I was seeing from my steps are almost completely eliminated. So although I was able to achieve super smooth footage, I actually lost because the Osmo Pocket isn't as good of quality as like the A7 III, the ZV-1, or the A7S III. If I wanted the higher quality image, then I would just have to accept the fact that you're going to see up and down movements with my gimbal. That is until now. I've seen the guys out there from football games and Hollywood movies who have vests attached to their bodies and some type of arm attached to the camera. And the camera just seems like it's flying through the air. I even saw the video that Potato Jet did on the Airy rig and I just watched in awe. But these rigs are thousands and thousands of dollars and in most cases out of reach for most people like me. Then one day about two months ago, a name popped up in my YouTube feed named Best Boy Adam. You may have gotten the same notification who literally blew my mind with his homemade Steadicam kit. I'll put his channel in the video I'm referring to in the description so you guys can also go check it out. In one video, he literally solved that impossible question, how to eliminate those up and down movements while maintaining the highest quality image, even while using a heavier setup. So I studied the video on how he built the rig. I took some of his ideas and some of my ideas, and this is what I've come up with. First, I'll explain to you how I built this rig and where I got all the parts in case you're interested in a similar setup. I'll leave everything that I used in links in the description so you can go through there and see what you already have and what you don't have. A lot of this stuff you might already have. My rig started with picking up the Flycam Galaxy vest and the Red King stabilizer. Literally a life-changing setup made by a company named ProAim. I wanted to make sure that I didn't cheap out on this portion of the setup. The Flycam Red King has been compared by Parker Wallback as you can get identical results for just $200 when he compared it to the $800 Glidecam DGS. Because I didn't already have a body vest or arm, I just went ahead with the bundle package which comes with the Flycam Red King. From all of my research, this vest and arm setup was the best deal while also getting the best results. I also decided to purchase this particular vest instead of getting something else like the Tilt of Float system rig because the Galaxy has a quick release for the arm where you can actually take off the entire rig and then put it back on without having to rebalance it. Whereas for my research, the tilt to float system, you would actually have to rebalance the arm every single time you put it back on. I also love the idea that you can use different gimbals, cameras, and setups with the Galaxy Vest. I recently had a gimbal malfunction on me, so I was in the market for a gimbal anyways. I settled on the Ronin RSC2 because I know that they're industry standard. My original idea was to attach the RSC2 to the Red King stabilizer, but after purchasing and setting up the rig, I quickly realized how dangerous the setup was. 
Due to the extended handle on the RSC2, the strain would have been too high for the little quarter mount screw that I would have had to attach between the Red King stabilizer and the RSC2 handle, and I was potentially putting my camera, the lens, and the new gimbal in an extremely vulnerable place if the little quarter mount screw broke or lost its thread. The only exception I have to this problem is using a smaller gimbal like the Weeble S or a gimbal where you can actually remove the handle. I decided to return the RSC2 and purchase the more expensive RS2 because it had a removable handle which gave greater security and less leverage on the gimbal when I connected it to the Red King stabilizer. When you remove the handle from the RS2, you are also removing the power supply because the handle is actually the battery. Thankfully, a company named Tilta created a power supply base plate to power the gimbal while the handle is removed using an old V-mount battery. The V-mount battery is not only used as a power source, it's also used as a counterweight to the rig itself. I picked up a universal V-mount battery plate so I could attach it to the bottom of the Red King stabilizer which is where my V-mount battery would go. The screws that came in the universal battery plate were just too short for the base of the Red King, but thankfully for us filmmakers, I found a longer screw that's the same size that can be found in any electrical outlet in any home. Now, I'm not saying for you to go pull the screws out of your electrical outlet. I'm just saying that it's a very common screw and it would be very easy to find. In fact, I'll leave the links to these particular screws in the description. Remember how we just talked about how I was too nervous to hook up the Red King stabilizer onto the rig with that little quarter mount inch screw? The tilt of power base plate has two quarter inch holes in the bottom and the Red King base plate has a linear strapping hole. So I was able to actually put two quarter inch screws to attach the Red King to the gimbal. And let me tell you, it's a solid connection. I am not nervous at all. Hooking the gimbal up to the Steadicam base plate also has its advantages so I can quickly swap between the rig and the tripod. Just make sure you have a spot on the tripod where you can hook up the V-mount battery so you can supply power to the gimbal. So after balancing my camera on the gimbal, I connected it to the Red King stabilizer and then connected the battery. I connected the gimbal to the battery using a D-tap extension wire I picked up on Amazon for 13 bucks. I balanced the center of gravity to be in the middle of the rig and positioned the rig to always float the camera level with the horizon. I just used the head of the Red King to adjust the screws to where I was finally feeling like the camera was level with the horizon. That way, if I let go of the rig, the camera would be level with the horizon in center position. Once this rig was completely balanced, I could freely move and manipulate the camera however I wanted. Then all I had to do was put on the vest, attach the arm and then mount the rig. Once the rig is mounted on the arm, you can just use the little screws on the arm to adjust for the weight of the rig. I like to try to get the camera to where it's eye level with me. You really wanna use the adjustment screws on the arm to get the rig to the point where you don't see the up and down movements while you walk. Every camera rig and setup is different, but it's all customizable. You can mount your phone or a monitor to the arm, either using a RavenEye transmission system or a hard wire into your HDMI port. So you can actually monitor the footage that's coming out of your camera. Tilta also sells a rear operating control handle, which can help you control which way the gimbal is positioned. But I didn't get one because I feel like the way that the camera flows on this rig already is super natural and I want to keep it that way. This rig is simply amazing. Once you start using it and you get the hang of it, you really don't ever want to go back to hand holding a gimbal. One day down the road, I'm going to look back and I'm going to say, remember when I used to hand hold gimbals? I pretty much set the gimbal to pan follow and then I just figure out how it moves in the air and then I just adjust to that movement. Another cool thing about this rig is you can actually stand still and the camera actually looks like it's on a tripod. Whereas if I was holding a gimbal and I was trying to hold it as still as possible, you would still see a little bit of movement. You can also achieve shots with this rig that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get if you were hand holding a gimbal. You can stretch it farther, those high angle shots, get those low angle shots. You don't see the up and down movements, which means no post-production work. You can walk over unleveled surfaces like dirt and grass. You don't have to walk backwards. It looks so professional when you show up to a shoot with it, but more importantly, you don't have to carry heavy setups anymore. This is when I would use it and when I wouldn't use it. I would use it if I was at an outdoor shoot, shooting for more than maybe say an hour. I don't think I would use it in someone's house like a real estate video because you lose the ability to get into those tight corners. If this is something that you're thinking about getting, I would say just do your research, 
and with gear you already have and maybe purchasing some accessories for people like us without massive budgets. If you have any questions about this rig, please leave it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. There's a lot of versatility with this rig and every rig is customizable to work however you want it to work. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Joe with Film Alliance and until the next video, peace.